Well, first of all, thank you for taking the time to talk to us. We very much appreciate it. It's my pleasure. Thank you. Uh, such an interesting uh, uh, topic of conversation, but, but talk us through what you mean by uh, community orientating policing. Well, really, as it relates to countering violent extremism, <clears throat> it's an enhanced version of, of community oriented policing. It's not your traditional community policing. Uh, officers really have to understand the culture, the tradition, um, where people come from, what the pressures on those families are and how to approach, what the best way to approach is. Because some, in some cases, they come from countries where there's a lot of mistrust of government and certainly a lot of suspicion around police agencies. I guess in a city like Los Angeles, this is a real challenge, isn't it? Because you've got so many different types of communities within that umbrella. Oh, we do, 220 languages, people from all across the world. It's really a, humo, a human mosaic of diversity. And uh, I think what we have to do, though, is look for communities that are isolated, on the fringe, balkanized from society, and look at strategies to bring those communities in so that they have a voice, so that they're invested, and they feel like they participate. Because this is a, a conference clearly uh, attended by your peers. What are some of the practical solutions? What do you actually do to make that happen? Well, we teach problem-solving skills, uh, we give access to government, we raise voices, we encourage civic engagement from communities so that they are a part of the solution and not uh, part of the problem. Um, I think the long-term solution to this phenomena that we're experiencing relative to violent extremism rests with communities. And it's not a, a Muslim problem, it's not a Jewish problem, it's not a Christian problem, it's everybody's problem. And uh, more and more, we need to uh, go for a whole of government approach, whole of community approach, and really a whole of nation approach. I get what you say, whole of community, whole of government, whole of nation, but, but, but almost the fact of law enforcement is it is the officer who's on the front line within those Well, communities. of course. I mean, we are the most symbolic, probably iconic form of government. We are in uniform. We're out on the street seven days a week, 24 hours a day. People identify government with police officers. And if they look at you as a partner and as a friend, a trusted friend, um, they're more likely to engage and, uh, and participate in helping to protect the values of our country. But that trust would get broken down if they look at the officer just there to gather intelligence. Absolutely. If, you cannot use this as a platform to exploit intelligence. In fact, if you do, uh, I, would state, I would say that you uh, lose your legitimacy. And if you lose your legitimacy, you lose the confidence of the community. So as a byproduct uh, of raising the stature of communities, uh, we're saying this isn't an, an inoculation against extremism, but it is a prescription to build healthy, resilient communities. And uh, if we can do that as a byproduct, communities will want to protect their neighborhoods just as much as the police do. Well, thank you ever so much indeed for coming to talk to us today. It's such a fascinating subject, and we really appreciate that. Thank it's you. It's my pleasure. Thank you.